seeking is seeking you. I love this quote by Rumi. And what it means is the magic is everywhere. The magic is inside you, inside of me, inside of the whole world. And music makes this magic flow. So join us on the divine soul journey to feel this magic, be part of the field, and together feeling that greatest love. I am so excited to welcome my beautiful co-host, Diane Ojar. Diane, thank you for being with us. Welcome. Thank you so much, Portia, and welcome to everyone, and welcome to Divine Soul Journey as my beautiful co-host. And you know what? I'm not just saying she's beautiful because she's actually stunning. You know, I mean, this girl, guys, she's from Hawaii. I mean, does that say anything else? I think, I do believe, I keep telling her she looks like a Lady Guanyin, um, and that's such a compliment for her, and for me as well, to be in her space. But I want to say welcome. Aloha. Assalamu alaikum. Namaste, Sitaram, peace. And to each and every one out there, you know, on, our, on behalf of us, there's nothing that brings us more pleasure every week than to sit with you and have amazing, amazing co-hosts with me and her guests. And this week we have a treat for you, a real treat. So Portia, why don't we, I will give you the honor of actually introducing our amazing guest this week, who is a very special friend of yours, and welcome on behalf of all of us. Oh, thank you, Diane. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Yeah, I just, I just love him. He's uber talented, but it's not just that. He really has a heart of gold. He is um, a family man. He loves his community. He has inspirational music. And really, he's just flowing. We talk about that love coming from your heart and soul. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pick out the highlights. It's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little challenging because his whole um, background and experience is just, it's mesmerizing. But I will try my best. So, welcome the Northwest King of Soul Music, Andy Silk. Andy is on fire. In the early twenty eight in early twenty eighteen, he wrote his very first hit song called The Best Day Ever. It is his first single off his now blazing up the Billboard Adult R and B chart and it stayed there for twenty five weeks. It debuted in the top thirty on both charts, reached the top ten made it to Billboard's Adele R&B Top 50 for the whole year. And this also made Andy, your friend and mine, the first Northwest artist to achieve this milestone. So this song was on the Platinum Top 20, held the number one spot on the official Indie Soul Chart for three consecutive weeks. Locked in at the number one spot for R&B, so on Music Choice, reached number two on the Amazon.com Contemporary R&B Bestseller list, and if that wasn't enough, was named the Independent Song of the Year. And this song, till this day, is still in very heavy rotation around the country. So this has put Andy on the national stage among musicians such as Bruno Mars, and I know him, he's He's a Hawaii boy, John Legend, um, Tony Braxton, and, and just many more. And his success is truly groundbreaking. By and, and I still live here, and you know, Andy just tours all around the, um, you know, all around this beautiful world of ours. But um, he he comes back and he makes these, these beautiful, um, you know, appearances. Because he loves the Northwest, and this is where he got his, his, you know, his, his following, and people got to know him, his face, his, his, you know, I know, I know because it was all over the place in the news and the jazz um, festivals and things like that. I saw him, you know, all over the place in the media and social media and performing. He's teamed up with 
uh, musical icons, Snoop Dogg, super producer, DJ Battle Cat, um, you know, for their next single, We On The Flow, <laughs> an impressive R&B track that definitely will not disappoint people. So, Auntie is just phenomenal. I could go on and on, but let me just say this before I introduce him. He's he's earned the the title of the Northwest King of Soul Music, and this is because of his soulful voice, his undeniable musical mastery within the Northwest music culture for more than three decades, and he's truly phenomenal. Two-time inductee to Oregon's Music Hall of Fame, multiple regional music awards, and he continues to play to sold-out crowds around the world. And so, you know, I don't think (laughs) we need much more to feel the magic, feel the excitement, and to really know that um, who we have with us today is so special. Can I, introduce, I want to introduce can, I, can, can I introduce him in one of my, you know, I'm practicing this, Andy, so can I introduce yes, him to one go of ahead, my yeah. radio boys? I hope I do you justice, Andy. <laughs> oh, God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I had it there for a moment. Yeah, let me prepare myself, yeah. So, Take a few deep breaths, yeah. Take a few deep breaths. Deep breaths. Yes. I'm so excited, my heart is just beating, like, goodness. I know! He's amazing. He's I magical. know. Okay. I know. A few deep okay. breaths, everybody deep around breath. the world in 21 yeah. countries. Okay. <laughs> Go okay. ahead. And today on Divine Soul Journey, I would love to welcome the fabulous, amazing, tan- talented. Hmm. See, I had a boo boo there. But let me try that again. This is going to be fun. I'm not going to edit this. <laughs> today on Divine Soul Journey, the one, the only fabulous, talented Mr. Andy Stokes. Give it up for Andy. Andy, welcome to the show. Woo! And the crowd goes wild. Did I pass the test, Andy? That was pretty good, yeah. Pretty good. You guys are quite entertaining. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Andy, we try. Oh, yeah, we are off the show. There's no question about that. I just love the spontaneity. Thank yeah, you. I just love the spontaneity. You guys are just, I, I, that is so open. This is this is fabulous. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Fortunately, God's been a long time since we talked or seen each other. So, yeah. Hope you are well. I've been great. Yeah, I I missed you folks, you know. And, and, and the thing is, um, I'm so happy. I know Andy has, and we'll talk about that later, his, you know, upcoming concerts and things like that. And, you know, after this, we'll, We'll give you some more information on how to contact him. But, but Andy, tell us a little bit more about what's been going on with you since I last saw you uh, a few years ago. And, and, and just, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm literally so happy when I see good people. And I told him this, and I mean it from my heart and soul. When I see good people doing so well in the entertainment field. I mean, what's going on with you now, Andy? Well, I'm in the, uh, in the process of uh, just, just writing. I've been writing music. Um, um, it's all I've been doing is creating, creating, creating. And, you know, I finally put a studio in the, in the house, and so I've been focused on that and, uh, you know, and, and uh, mainly just focused on keep writing the music to stay relevant, to, you know, stay uh, in the game. So when we're able to <coughs> excuse me, move again, um, you know, I'm ready to go, so. Stand, you know, you know, stand true to myself, stand true to my craft, and you know, my community, and, and uh, my wife, my family, and just uh, you know, staying on that uh, on the right path, you know. Uh, That's awesome. And then, you know, loving everybody. That's well, you know, I, you know, what I do, Andy, is I like to take people back on a journey, and I like people to know, and I like to get to know people. Where it started because you never know who you're going to inspire, especially young people right now, um, those who have a talent, a gift, but they're not quite sure how to start. So tell us, you know, how did it all start for you? How old were you when you decided that? Do you play any mus- musical instruments by any chance? Well, um, I, I can tell you my story. Um, 
Yes, please do. Um, I was, uh, I was, uh, my dad was in the army. I was an army brat, you know, and um, my my life started in Stuttgart, Germany, in Germany, and uh, from first grade to third grade, came back to the states until the sixth grade. Then we went back to Germany, and I was there until I was a junior in high school. And then we came back here. So I basically grew up, you know, my teenage, a lot of my teenage years in, in Germany. And then we came back to the States. Then came to the Northwest to Fort Lewis in Washington, Tacoma, Washington. I, uh, how I got to Oregon was a football scholarship. I went to Mount Hood College and the University of Oregon. And uh, so, you know, I always sang. My father and I used to, you know, play music on the weekends. And, uh, you know, he would, you know, he was a big music lover and, um, always had his uh, his records, you know, and uh, and this started at an early age with me. I used to get a broomstick and pretend I was James Brown, and I would, you know, sing and dance and basically entertain my dad, and you know, and uh, by my junior year in high school, I realized that I could sing really well. So I never pursued music. Never, if you'd ask me back then about you know doing what I'm doing now, I'd I'd have looked at you like I you were crazy, but because I my focus was play pro football by my mama house. That was my focus. And uh, make sure I do well in school and, and get my degree and all that stuff. So, And uh, I just uh, was hanging out one night at a place in, out on the west side. And um, and I used to just make up words and ad-lib the music. And uh, the owner of the, the venue asked me to, hey, man, why don't you, you know, sing a couple songs? And I'll pay you. I said, man, I'm not singing this song nobody, man. I just do it for fun. And so, you know, uh, that Friday, that was a Thursday night. That Friday night, I came in, and by midnight, they said, oh, we just got a singer. This has his debut in Vegas, and he's here tonight to do a song or whatever. So I'm looking around, seeing who it is, and all of a sudden, they turned the spotlight on me. So I was on the spot, nervous as hell, you know, <laughs> fighting it. No, I'm not doing it. Oh, no, I'm not doing it. And uh, so how my career started, was standing on the chair in a DJ booth, yeah. making up words to the music to ring my bell. And uh, that's how I, I got started. I love ring my and bell. So I... I love ring my bell. <laughs> you, know that, you know, not to cut you short, so, but that's, that's you know, yeah. let, let's put it this way. Um, you know, expect anything on this show, guys, you know. Um, right now, you know, in the words of James uh, Brown, whoa, I feel good. I knew that I would. And now I'm going to say, you know, some of these songs, I'm a disco girl, plain and simple. I grew up with James Lass, her papa, the T on her brass, you know, Andy Williams, but I was really young. But when you came to the disco side of it, the 70s, 80s, you know, it didn't matter if you know the lyrics to the, some of those songs, you just sang along with it, like you did. So did yeah. you, the disco yeah, the, age, is that the disco age that you started and then you went up into R&B because it sort of slips in there? Well, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a before the end, the, basically, of the disco age when the R&B music started, you know, um, I was 22 years old. Um, um, so, and uh, when I started, because I, I say, you know, I got into it late. So it was right, I was 22 years old. I remember that. It was, uh right before my birthday and um yeah so you know of course the disco era you know i was in college you know when all that was going on and and you know and everybody was happy having you know good time dancing you know just you know you hear the music you didn't ever have you know they didn't need the words you heard the music you know exactly what it was you know yeah. hey that's my song let's go dance hey da, 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 da. you know and i used to sit at home and just or driving in my car and i would hear a song and i would always try to put my own stick on it you know how I would sing it vocally, whatever, and so not knowing then that uh, I, that's how I created my style of singing, and so um, well, uh, anyway, after that, Ben Wolf asked me to join a band, and I said, why not? And uh, I was working for an advertising company, loved my job, it was going great, so I did music on the weekends, and then from there, um, I went from this band to that band, and, and uh, got with the band Cool Arm, we got signed with A&M Records. And uh, I was standing in L.A. We did a show at the Roxy, and Herb Albert was in there because his car broke down. And Lou Adler, who, who uh, produced uh, Rocky Picture Horror Show and had the Mamas and the Papas and all that back then. So it was cool. his, he owned the Roxy. And mm -hmm. we got back home. It was in August of 89. We got home in, in, uh, by October. Herb Albert called and said he wanted to sign the band to the, 
to the label, so we signed, and the next thing I know, I'm on the same label with Janet Jackson. So I called my dad. <laughs> I called my dad. I said, Dad, guess what? I just we just signed a record here with A&M. I said I'm on the same label with Janet Jackson. <laughs> and my mom screamed. What? My mom started screaming. She started screaming. I said, Yeah. So that's how my career started. You know, and I and I, I and the, the, one of the main thing I want to say is. I'm blessed to, you know, uh, I, I, and I thank all those musicians because, you know, here's a guy that didn't know anything because of them is the reason I'm here right now because they taught me everything. Absolutely. So you don't get here by yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't get here by yourself. It's, it's a village and, 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 and uh, not burning bridges. And my stick is, after doing this for a while, when people ask me, why do you, you know, do this? I said, I'm giving unconditional love to music. And that's, that's amazing. You know, one of the things. I that love that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's amazing I because, yeah. you know, here's the thing we don't realize is that when you look at some of the, the, the movies that for some of the icons, with James Brown or, um, you know, Ray Charles, you know, you know, Dream Girls and so forth. When I mm -hmm. look at it, the struggles they had to go through to even get oh, recognized. Yeah. You know, I love the Temptations. I love the Pretenders. I love all those guys on Frankie Valley. They struggled and struggled. And now some of the music that we have is all based on that. Now the people, yep. the new musicians of coming on that's getting the you know, million dollar, trillion dollar deals, I have to say, are so spoiled because they don't understand yep. where it came from and the hard work for their forefathers, yep. meaning in the music industry, Absolutely. right? And the music is, doesn't have, yeah. honestly, for me, some of the music doesn't have any rhythm or soul. If you don't have soul in that music, yeah. we don't have the rhythm and blues, a little bit of disco, a little bit of this, a little bit of Latino, this is, it just doesn't feel right. That's yeah, just you gotta me. You got to have the soul in the music. You have to have the soul. Yeah, you got to have the soul in the music. It's you not, have have yeah, it's not, it's a song that you, when you hear a song, whether you hear the song or not, it's like you have to sing along. You could. It's just the music. I'm from Trinidad, so we have calypso and and soca and so forth. And some of these songs do not resonate because, and even chutney, which is a crossover. And it's not even mm -hmm. about the words for the chutney. Some of them are horrible, by the way. And most people may not like me for saying that, but it is. Um, but it's the music. It's the music yeah, there as well. The and music. It's, it's the, music. the music. Now, when yep. you put some cool yep. lyrics. Which is, you know, that's why one of the things I admire about country music, it's all about everybody's love story and, and you know, broken hearts right. and heartbreak and all those things like that, which resonates with people. So right. your lyrics have to resonate with people. It's a story. And I notice now um, that some of the music that's coming back, a lot of the artists, the young artists now, some of the prominent ones who have actually, you know, risen, they sort of shifting and turning towards the storylines about their own story. And that's how they begin to write. Is that true or not? Do you notice that happening or is it just me? Well, but, but the most, it is, you know, music is always trending. And so mm -hmm. I think the younger generation now, they're starting to listen to the songs from back in the day. They're starting to listen mm -hmm. and, 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 and start to educate themselves about, you know, well, where does this style come from? Who is this artist? And they read up on the artists and then they realize how hard it is, you know, coming up and how hard it is to even get to the level of, of being on a billboard or, you know, going to the Grammys or whatever. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the younger generations have started to see that and their music is inflected in their music because they're writing better songs now. And they're and because they're writing they're writing they're writing truth. They're writing truth. They're writing about their life, what's going on in their life. But you're not afraid to write about it anymore. And when you and when you do that, it comes it comes across excuse me personal, and people can relate to it, and they start listening to your lyrics. Now, if you got the combination of, uh, you know, the first thing you know, like you were talking about before, you know, when we were coming up, we heard the music, and we knew what it was before the singer even started singing, you know, because the music touched us. That's the first thing that touched you is the music. And then if you have a great lyricist that comes with some words that are true and that relates to us in real life, that's what touches people. 
Absolutely. And don't, know, be afraid to sin. don't be afraid to Don't be afraid to be true to yourself. You Absolutely. know, don't get caught up in the game of, okay, I got to be like this. Oh, I got to be like that. Oh, I have a hit record. No, just be true to yourself. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. The universe will bring it to you. That's it. You know, one of, I the, love that. Yeah, one of the things I love about Fantasia and Jennifer Hudson, they went through a lot when they won American Idol. And, you know, they were just so true, so simple. You know, I remember one time they were making fun of Jennifer Hudson's size, and I mean, she looks fabulous now. And um, these guys mm -hmm. actually did their homework, um, but they have a gift. They have a gift. They don't know how, well, on one side, you know, they have the gift, but on the other side for survival and business, you know, some of them didn't do very well with that because their stardom um, went by so fast, they, they, they didn't have time to breathe to understand that. You know, my son, I always think about my son. I laugh my head off when I think about this because um, he knows I'm a disco girl and so forth. And he was working in a restaurant and <laughs> what he did was he used to have this music on. I was like, oh, where did that music come from? He said, well, that's my stuff. And I said, well, he said, well, you have to pay for the old people. I said, the old people? The old people is me, okay? <laughs> and um, he's saying, yeah, I got that from you. Because they would hear it all the time in the car. There's a melody I play, and I was like, and my my oldest, my youngest, and my oldest would sing along. And I was like, how do you guys know this? Uh, it's a disco medley for about sixty something minutes. And he said, yeah. And they start singing it. And I'm thinking, well, at least I've done something right. And now he plays the tracks. <laughs> no, because again, they appreciate this and where we came from. And now, and this is like you know, prominent restaurants. And I'm thinking, and he said, yeah, I have it on my Spotify uh, music and I play it. And I was, that actually made me feel good, but I was really shocked because I didn't know, you never know what these kids are listening to in the, in the back of their minds when we, when they mimic us or copy us or look at us. But um, it was surprising that he's now playing all this music from all these eras, December, you know, uh, 63 and and all these different R&B and it, I'm like, Whoa, really and truly? I couldn't believe you had that soundtrack. So I applaud you. Portia, go ahead. I mean, definitely. No, yeah. no, you know, I was, so I was much just to thinking about, about that. Mm -hmm. No, I was just thinking about that because Dion loves music. She has her, her, her so, so training, her DJs, um, and then she has her gospel, <laughs> and then she has her. Oh no, God. it's great. And Trinidad, she loves that. So she puts that all on the radio and on these. Um, Different for fun, stations. for fun, no, for fun. I just do it for no, fun. No, but it's your, it's your therapy, right? It is my so, therapy, music. it is. I did, I did. I woke up one day. It is, uh, music is me. healing. Yeah, and you know the funny it thing is, is I just did it for fun, and now people want it, so now I have no choice. I have to give it out every week. They love it, right? And, well, because uh, it, it's the it's the intention that mm -hmm. you, you bring to it, because you have such a love for it, and you just want to dance and make people happy, and so of course that went into you know, your your musical shows, and so I understand they love it. But you know what I really want to know, too, is the influence that maybe yes. some of the music had early on with um, Andy, because I know I'm the same way with, like, Dan. My parents, I mean, we grew up on all of the Motown. My, my parent, my dad, he would always take us to Vegas, and every single, I mean, I'm telling you, every single year, we would we'd go to the um, shows there, and he just... Nice. I've never seen him so happy in his whole life when he can just be there and just, he smiles so big. His music has that effect on people. It and I grew does. up with like dance parties and things like that and listening to people. So Andy, do you have influences like that? I mean, your parents, your family, or people that you love, that you, like you say, you stand on the shoulders of so many people in the heart. Who inspired do you? Want to share you? Yes, who inspired you? Well, um, well, um, my my uh, my father is uh, is my my guy. He um, he was a man who a man's man uh, took care of his family. He was you know uh, six kids, you know, me being the oldest, and and uh, he was just wise beyond years and um, and disciplined. He was, the one he was very disciplined, that, right? And, yeah, yeah, it's a military, oh, very disciplined. disciplined. You know, yeah, and uh, you know, and uh, he was a you know master sergeant in the army, so you know discipline was uh, first and foremost. You know, there was five boys and one girl, and, mm -hmm. and we had to step two. You know, we had to you know 
at home. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm and, sorry. And, I'm so. sorry. I'm going to interrupt you a second. Five boys and one girl. Okay, let me think about that. Hmm. My mom has five <laughs> girls and one boy, and she, he is spoiled rotten <laughs> by her. Now, there's two things that happen. Mm. The girl is a tomboy. Well, a couple of things. Um, she's very protected from her brothers. Oh, she probably just went nuts. <laughs> nope. Oh, she, she was, was blessed she was, she and was she was spoiled. She was semi-spoiled. She was what? Semi-spoiled. She wasn't too, she wasn't too spoiled. Oh, she was, um, you know, but she was the queen. She was daddy's girl. Was she and, the youngest? Uh, was she the youngest? Well, the, 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 warnings, the warnings came quickly if you... You know, you pick on your sister, you dealing with that. So we never <laughs> picked them. Yes, yes. Well, that's never, so. Never nothing. We did not mess with my sister at all. It was like taboo, no man's land, in trouble. And, <laughs> yes. and, 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 and I'm, I, hell no. We did hell no, not messing with my sister. Is so she? Was she the? Was, was she the so, youngest? Was she the youngest? Or what was she? No, she was the. She's the fourth oldest. She's the fourth. Okay. Oh. Oldest and. uh and yeah, she ended up, uh, she, you know, our, our family is, is a sports family. Um, you know, my dad was all world, everything in sports, in, the, in wow. high school, college, and the Army. And and so I uh, I had to follow him. And he got, and we got all the talent. You know, my brothers, I, I, every one of us was really good at sports. And so my sister was too. She was really great at softball. But, uh, you know, but she didn't follow that, that dream. She didn't, you know, she said, you know, I love playing sports and everything, but I'm he goes, I'm a lady. I ain't trying to do all that no more. I said, okay. You know, so, and she found her a, a, a beautiful man, and she's happily married. But uh, she got two kids. One of her kids just got married. And, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're all Lovely. good. But uh, the, you, best, you best believe that, you know, nobody messed with my sister because dad did not play <laughs> none of that at all. And so, oh, <laughs> so, you know, I remember when she came of age, um, she said, okay. Mom said, okay. Your sister needs her own room. So you got five boys. So all the big, the big three was, was in one room and the two little ones was in another room. So Valerie can have a room, you know, room by herself. So it was no joke when it came to Valerie. It was no, I mean, it was quick to be reprimanded, quick to get in trouble, quick to be grounded. Oh my gosh, she must have loved it. She's like a, she's like a princess. Queen, yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah. She is. I am pretty yeah. sure yes. that she's had yes. a her. very good life. But how I guess I continue. I just had to put that in there because we have the opposite in my family. Five girls. No, I love uh, Abby's story. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yes, but well, continue yeah, my dad with that. Yes. Now, my dad was an uh, inspiration for me. He was the one that uh, was the music guy. He was the one that had the voice. And my mom had a voice too, but my dad had a voice. and. And but I didn't know how much he was into it until he he passed, and the, the preacher was uh, talking about my dad and at the funeral, and I was he was going you know Bernard Stokes, he said it was hard to follow him after he sang, he had a voice of an angel, and even this and I'm, I'm looking at my brother, brother now you know where you got your voice from, it was dad not mom, and so at the end of the, the ceremony um. Uh, uh, gave me a book, and it was a, a, a blue folder, and Dad had written all these songs and poems and stuff, and I'm going through them right now to try to, wow. you know, try to take one of his songs and try to, you know, you know, and write it, rewrite it, and put it out and, and, and uh, out there. But he uh, totally amazed me, um, you know, when I was going through tough times. Um, you know, he was, uh, he always had that word that would always lift me up and, you know, and uh, as well as my mom, too. My mom was a force. He was, you know, five foot uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's like, and the boys were scared of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we were scared of mama. When mama spoke, yes, ma'am. Okay, 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 okay. You know, it wasn't no mess around, but God, he, I miss him. I miss him so much because, uh, you know, he saw my struggles and he was always there and all, uh, you know, and came to see me play football, him and, you know, Colonel Johnson used to come down and, and with the family sometimes. And, uh, man, he just taught me so much. He just, you know, because he worked two, three jobs, 
you know, take care of his family. And he said, you got to do what you got to do no matter what life throws at you because you don't know when the curveball is coming and you don't know when the straight ball is coming. But you got to be ready and if it hits you and if it blindsides you, hunt. he said, son, if it blindsides you, okay, he said, you might be upset for a minute, but then you got to keep stepping. Uh-huh. He said, keep stepping. And he said, and he said, uh, and always, uh, you know, seek your higher power and, uh, you know, ask the universe for what you want. And if you live the right life, it'll bring it to you. Might not, you know, might not bring it to you when you want it. But if you keep living the right life the way you're supposed to do, and uh, it'll come to you. So. Oh, and you are so special. I actually can feel my heart opening when you're saying that. You know, you miss your dad, and um, mm-hmm. you found his book, and you're trying to bring his words to song and to to, to music and. And I, I, I know my, my heart too goes out because some of the most special times is when my father was working. I really only saw him when, um, I just did a show about that, um, on the radio with Dion the other day with the KT mm-hmm. team. And I remembered when I was little and the only times I saw him growing up was early in the morning when he would take me to mm-hmm. breakfast and I never saw him till the next morning because he was mm-hmm. working the whole time. And so, yep. um, and that, but that taught me a lot too. It taught me about, hard work and working for something you really want and to to love your family, you know, and to, to be close. And I can tell. No wonder you have this essence. That's why I said, you know, one thing great about Andy is that um, I was talking to some people about, you know, it's like he's just, he's talented, um, but he's just, he has a heart of gold. Like I see him, the way he represents his community, the way he does. has like in the neighborhood concerts and the Facebook and, and the way he just like open up all of these venues and and we celebrate people and then you know like he tried to hang out with Gabe you know Terry's son I just I saw all of that I'm like I like him I just think he's awesome you you know yeah yeah you know that's my father back back to my father again you know you know like like I I said we were blessed with talent we were we were um, boys that um you know, had God gift talent, and we didn't really have to work as hard as some people to play football, basketball, whatever. But my dad, when I got my football scholarship, I had a great high school career and got a football, you know, scholarship. And, and before I left to go to college, my dad, um, he pulled me aside. He said, let me tell you something. If I ever hear you bragging about yourself, I'm going to drive down there, and I'm going to kick your butt. But he didn't say butt. <laughs> And, and he said, if I, he said, you let your talent do the talking and you stay humble because I don't care if you a millionaire, a great football star in the NFL or a, a basketball player and, and, and a pro basketball player that can be taken from you in a second. Yeah. And you want to get so big to where you annoy people that they don't want to be around you and then you're lost. Very wise man, it must be. Very, very, very wise man. Very good advice. Yeah. So I, I'm grateful for everything that I've that, that I've got, and uh, you know I, you know, you know when you grow up with a father like that, and you know my, this, I, you know newspapers, how popularity was huge in high school, you know, and everything. But uh, he had he he taught me that this is just part of your life. Okay, be blessed that you wake up every day and you're able to do this. All this extra stuff, these awards and newspaper clippings and stuff like that, that's just a bonus. Okay, he said, so he said, um, it's going it to come to a part in your life where football may not be what you do. And uh, it turned out he was right because, you know, football wasn't it. And, uh, and then that's when my mother comes in and when I remember when I, said, okay, football's not going to be my career. You know, I I drove um, up to Tacoma to see my family and, you know, you know, I was kind of down on myself. And and um, my mom came and put her hands on my shoulders. She said, you were put on this earth for something else and it's not football. Football trains you. Football gets you ready to be popular. But you, you need to, you, you're on it for something else. And then she just walked in the kitchen. And that was it. And I didn't know what it was. And next thing I know, here I am, you know, God, music all over the world and this and that. And found, you know, found my soulmate. And, you know, here I come full circle to, you know, to get to talk to Portia again. And, 
<laughs> See, that's, 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 that's a great life, man. You can't, I you can't did. You know what, Andy? I have to say this. I just love what you just said. Uh, first of all, yeah. um, you know, I'm eternally grateful for you guys, for you to take the time with us, but you said you found your soulmate. Let's not even go there because that is one of the most difficult things in this world. Because once you find your soulmate, you find that person who, regardless of what, it's unconditional love. And we have many soulmates for different reasons. And once you find that peace with someone, or within someone, and you know, we talk about the oneness, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. You know you've done right. You've done something right. And that's the most important Mm -hmm. thing. Um, the careers will come and go, the money will come and go, the fame will come and go, the awards will come. You know, when we get all these you know, recognitions, which we all do, to tell you the truth, I don't really put it out. I don't even know what to do with it sometimes. I know that I'm not grateful for it. But if somebody gives it to me, you know, because you really truly deserve it, and that's because, and that's what happens a lot, um, it, it sometimes... I don't know. It just doesn't feel like you've done what you're supposed to. You know what I'm saying? There's certain awards that will resonate and it's close to your heart. And there's some of them. It's just there because it's just there. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. You know, you know, I want to share something. Um, it reminds me because it's so early. Early I've, I've done pageants and things like that. I just actually, last year we did another one. But that was the last one for me. But I remember mm-hmm. early in... Um, my career as a pageant, I have this great pageant coach. He's probably one of the best in the world. His name is um, Takeo Kobayashi. He trains all the Americas in this world. And it's everyone from, you know, Hawaii. He trained Brooke Lee. Um, Brooke Lee went to my high school. But I remember this thing. She was always in the Miss Hawaii track. So he wanted to train me for Miss Hawaii as well. But I ended up in a different direction in my life at that time. But but he did train me for um, another pageant, which I didn't win that year, but I won the second year. And I, and I owe that to him because he really can bring out the majesty in people, you know, the queen in people and the king in people. But what well, I want to say this about Brooklyn is she went through Miss Hawaii track for year after year after year, and she always lost it. She would come in like sixth, fourth, fifth, second, maybe first runner. She would never take the crown. And then she went into the Miss. Hawaii USA track, and that was the right track for her, because, you know, it's just different. One scholarship, one, you know, it's just different. They're both scholarship, but different vision for things, you know? And so that was the perfect one for her. And he had trained her all those years. And finally, she took the crown, not just the, um, you know, she took all the way through, all the way to Miss World, Miss USA, Miss Universe, and then all the way to Miss World. And she says this, because you, you don't know the backstory about her, but I knew a little bit of her history, but I watched a show on her, um, like documentary style, and she said this. She said, you know, in high school, um, my father had cancer. And mm. she said, no matter what, as I was training for the pageant, and, you know, win, lose, draw, she said this. She said, when the waves were pounding, so, you know, I from Hawaii, right, on the North Shore, so they have these huge, like, 30-foot waves and everything. When the waves were pounding, and my father wanted to go out to lunch because he was in his chemo, and um, so that his time where every, every day was, like, life or death, yeah? We didn't know when he was going to leave. He would pull us mm-hmm. out of school. He would get take out lunch. We call bento in Hawaii, right? Take out lunch. And he'd pull us out of school, and we'd go to the North Shore, and we'd just watch the waves with him. And she said, those were the best days of my life. Not the crown. is to be with my father. You know? And when Andy was speaking, that's when I thought about that. And so I just want to share that. I want to echo that, what Andy's saying. No matter what we achieve in life, you know, what milestone, always remember who you are. Because without that, you will get lost. And so yes, I just wanted to share that, yeah, because that, that came into my heart when Andy was talking about his father and about what he just shared. And I just love what he just said. Like, just the last, like, 15, 10 minutes we were just talking is, like, amazing. People need to watch this show. need to listen to this. <laughs> you know what, Portia? Yeah, anyway. No you know, Portia knows this. Um, I do this radio show still. <laughs> no background. Okay. <laughs> no background. 
in um, training whatsoever and you know I said I have to do this and what brings me more joy than anything else is when I have to sit with Portia and her team or just doing this here because this is for fun for me um, and this is what brings me joy not everything else and people don't know that um, I love I had this equipment for over two years in, at my place sitting there I was learning to use it and it didn't happen and now Portia knows the story you know it's a work in progress don't get me wrong but this is what I look forward to this is what I love to do it's not as all those other things um, you know not the shows the TV shows and so forth um, it's just playing around with this this piece of equipment it's what really and I'm learning so much because there's a lot to do and in life you know we have to look at the little simple things that bring us joy for sure on that note why don't we do um because we can talk 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 and we'll forget that we need to actually before i say that i just want to let people know again those who are just joining us thank you so much for joining us if you want to contact us or find out how to get in touch with andy as well you know certainly do email us at dsjshow2020 at gmail.com and there's so much happening and, and definitely we look forward to hearing from you but i believe it's a good time for us to do a forgiveness practice and maybe tie it in with a you know for gratitude because we are very grateful uh, for what we where we are what we have even what we don't have yet we are grateful because sometimes not having something people don't understand it. it's it's a gift and i'm beginning to think about that for myself uh, when we still want something it's also maybe not for us and we are grateful and we have to be open-minded so why don't you lead us in a short um forgiveness and also gratitude practice so because i know all this just look to. forward to that every week yeah. and they do i know but and we're gonna do a little differently all, today we all you know we all love blessings i'm sure andy does as well and we all could do with something yeah. right now so go ahead sure. it's all yours so thank you dan so what we're going to do, we're going to do a little differently today because we have Andy with us and um, he's so special. And, and what he, he he just said, he really just spoke from the heart. And just I wrote things down. I'm like, you know, all these things are so helpful, you know, for, for artists that are just beginning and also those that have been here for a while and all the different genres and music and dance. And, you know, I, have, I was just in another meeting with a few other ones that want to put some beautiful paintings to music and they were sending me their songs and songwriting. It's just incredible. So we have all different talents on the show and, and coming up and all these things. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to do a really short um, forgiveness and we're going to just talk about the things that we're grateful for. And I'm going to turn it to each person to just to speak just a few words about what they're really grateful for in their life. So let's join together from 21 countries and more around the world and let's go into our heart and soul and just offer our deepest love, compassion, forgiveness for ourselves, for others, our ancestors, all of the, the truly great people in our life, those that we spoke about, that we stand on their shoulders so that we can, we can love and share our talents with the world that allow the blessing for our family to have what they have, the teachings of our parents, of our extended family, of our community, and every color, creed, nationality, culture, man, woman, child, with all varying degrees of talent and love, let's just come together as one and offer the heart of forgiveness to each person. Unconditional forgiveness, just like Andy spoke about, that his music is unconditional forgiveness. So whether you make music, dance to music, share music, share your life with others, let our life share that unconditional love that we feel in this moment right now that Andy spoke about and really helped us to come to a higher point. And let's speak our gratitude, because a lot of times we don't express our gratitude that's in our hearts, the people that we love, 
one that matters the most. So I'm going to start, which is very short. I'm going to express my gratitude to my parents. My father's birthday is in two days. Today I wanted to do an early birthday present to them, so I'm going to, um, I'm actually going <laughs> to, um, I offered to pay for their, their birthday celebration. We're doing it early. Um, my dad's favorite restaurant. So I just call it in and um, they'll have that food delivered to them. I just wanted to do something special. But I wanted him to know how much I love him. How much he's meant to me all of these years. And I, like Andy, he's come to sit with me in my bedside. When I was growing up and struggling as a teenager, and even before that, I was a very sensitive child. And he would always drop these pearls of wisdom. And one word from him, I transformed my whole life. That's the magic. And I thank my mother for standing next to him. Even when things got tough and they struggled through life. She was always there for me, supporting me would always be the first to want to hear my my stories, whether it was film or television. I thank them for coming to my first theater play in, in Vegas and bringing some of my extended family from Hawaii. Just all of those very special things. I thank Leanne for opening up her dream and for holding this dream for so long for all of us and to be able, like she said, to share her joy. Her greatest joy is to bring people here and to share their story and their life with everyone around the world. I thank her for that. I thank Andy for taking some time out of his busy schedule to share his unconditional love of music and life and to share with the other artists around the world, those that are struggling, to not give up. And that's my gratitude for today. So maybe we can have Dianne share and Andy share as well. Why don't we have Andy share? Sure. Um, uh, I'm grateful for my my family, my siblings, um, mom, my mother and father, my wife, and um, my fans. Um, my fans are part of my family. They've been on this journey with me for 38 years. And uh, so I'm grateful for them. I hope all of them have, you know, are doing well in their lives. And if they're struggling, you know, reach out for help. You know, know that I'm here for you. And uh, I'm grateful for, you know, being able to wake up, you know, every morning to enjoy this life. And then, you know, to all my friends and, and family, you know, I love you. And, you know, I'm grateful for, you know, Everything about you and everything is in the universe. Oh, beautiful. Wonderful. Go ahead, Diane. Thank you both for sharing. Portia, I'm not very happy with you right now, okay, because I have to um, probably mess up my makeup. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You have five to ten minutes before I zoom, so go ahead. You're really? Fine. <laughs> Seriously? Um, here's the thing. You know, from time, to, from time to time, we always grateful. There's one person I wish I could find, and I've been, I have tried to search. I have to say try because try means fail because I failed with it because uh, I can't find her. Her name is Janice. Janice is the one who led me to Master Shah's Center about seven years ago. And, um, I didn't do the, the Tao Hands Practitioner at the time. I got approved and I didn't do it for many reasons. When I came back last year, um, always in the back of my mind to come back. So I went, I'm so grateful for knowing her. She's a lawyer and I have no idea where she disappeared to. Honestly, I have tried and I don't know. And I wish I could find her and I probably will one day to tell her thank you. Because without her, I would not have known or met any of you at the beginning. I miss my parents because they were in business. And I have an uncle, my mom's cousin, who actually is um, 
who lives up here. I'm Kazabayat, my niece. So proud of me. And there's a few people who really and truly, um, I don't have many people in my circles as I used to for many reasons. Or oh, it just happened. Because when you're in a journey in a path, it's a little bit, um, it's not a very big space. Um, it's a big space for people in the community, but for people around you supporting, it's a very small group. And there's a few people who have believed in me along the way, and some of them are there, and some are not there anymore, for whatever reason, because they have to have, they have to be on their journey. But Portia, I have to say to you, I have a surprise for you. I just gotta confirm it first, and I know you're not gonna say no. I should have told you that because in case something happens. Um, I love you to thy kingdom come. Portia and I apparently have been together for many, many lifetimes. And we just hit it off. She has opened up and saved my life. And of course, definitely Master Shah. And to all the teachers who have taken the moment, the students, the groups, the leaders, to bring us to where we are today, the support that we have is unconditional. I don't know if Portia knows, she's so humble. You know, I worry about her in terms of, you know, she eat, does she take care of herself? And she always That's gives, fine. gives, gives. She always gives, gives, gives. I don't know how she does it from one minute to the other. But for you, my dear, you're closer to me than anybody I know. And if I didn't tell you how much I admire you, I appreciate you, love you to death, and I see your students and your groups, how much they love you. Yeah. You're one of the best things, 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 <laughs> person um, in my life. Putting everything Thank aside, you. because you never say no. You never say no. You're always there, twenty-four-seven. So I have to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because you bring all of this to everybody out there, and your drive. Um, thank you. And really one day, I one day people will see and appreciate what we see in you. And I promise you, as best as I can, I will make that happen. To get you outside your comfort um, zone. To get you uncomfortable <laughs> to take you where you need to be. So thank oh, you from the bottom of my very heart. Sweet. Now my, oh, now my face is really have to get fix my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just love each other. And we haven't known each other for so, no, so long. No, no, you know, no, 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 it's beautiful, no. yeah. Well, and you're right, it's a soul family too. Like what Andy said about the fans, and uh, it's not so much, um, yes, we have some people that follow what we do and everything, but really, it's like what Andy says, it's like a family. It's a community. We are a family. It's, no. it's, 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 we all come up together and we all love each other. So it's it's beautiful. I, I'm very grateful. What is this? I'm grateful that? too. This is that, you know? Yeah. We are family. So listen, um, Andy, your thoughts, and I'll go and let Portia yeah. pull, uh, uh, let Portia close off the show. So, your words of wisdom. Okay. You got a minute. Be true to yourself. Love yourself. Be kind to people. And those are my words. Whoa, short and sweet. Just that. Short and simple. Short and, short and sweet. To the point. To the point. No. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I'm going to tell you what I love about Andy, and, and it's so nice. We talked about gratitude and love, and he truly does love his community and fans. I'm going to tell you this. When I went to his concert here in Oregon, it was great, and, um, well, one of the concerts, um, you know, but he performed just so many different people, like the Jazz Fest. It's just like one of the most popular events here, and just like people all over the place. It was amazing. You know what he did? He took the time to come up to me, to talk to me. And at that point, I mean, I had time to meet friends there, but I got there so late because I was working late. And I just showed up because I just I just love supporting artists no matter what, right? I just showed up and I didn't, and they had already left. I just sat by myself and I was just, and he came and he sang to me and he talked to me. 
and he appreciated me, and I'm just like, wow, this person is special, you know? It's not, not always do people do that. They take the time, they make you feel special, you know? I think I bought a CD as well, and I had that on a plane, and it was just like, he's something. And so I wrote down some of the things he said, and I just want to end with that. He said to share unconditional love, and he said through music. So for the artists out there, I would say that is amazing gold. I was inspired. I just started back with voice lessons. Today is going to be my first one. Um, I'm going to have it in a few hours. I was inspired by Andy and other people, so I wanted to do that. And then Andy said, um, really allow yourself to speak about your life. You know, when you songwrite, and, and, and not to be afraid. So this goes for music, but this goes for life, too, you know? He talked about people that are songwriting, you know, with their heart and soul, and to really pay attention to their life and to speak the truth. And that's how music coming back. I agree with you, and sometimes some of the music that was coming out, you don't really even understand what people are saying anymore. But back in the day, you understood every word. You identify it like what Andy said by the, the melody and the movement that just flowed through you. And the last thing he said was, don't be afraid to be yourself. And I love that. So I just wanted to leave those words from all of us, from, from Andy's inspiration, from all of us, Deanne and I as well. So thank you, Andy. Thank you, Deanne. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to Thank say, we love yes. having you. The show is not over yet. Trust me. We love having you. We're going to pop you in a minute. But I want to say, on behalf um, of everyone, thank you, Andy. And on behalf of us, thank you, everyone out there, for being with us every week. And I just want to say, music with the food of love, just play on. Just put it on and enjoy it. So I just want to say to everyone, aloha, namaste, sitaram, assalamu alaikum. Greetings, blessing, and the words of Master Shah, love, peace, and harmony. Go out there and spread the love, the peace, and the harmony like we are and like Andy is. And I guarantee you, when you wake up in the morning, you wake up with a smile, laughing, joyous, and there's nobody can take your joy away from you unless you let them. So be good and enjoy. Thank you again. Until next time on the Divine Soul Journey, this is Portia and Deanne and Andy saying thank you, everyone. Thank you. And you both. We love you, Andy. Don't worry. Of course. <laughs>